All right, so I know these days it's all about pumpkin, but how about changing it up a little bit and how about something with blueberry and lemon? Well, Erica Schlick, one of our favorite cookbook authors, is back with a delicious recipe. Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to make my blueberry lemon loaf from my book Wandering Palette. And this bread is not only gluten-free, grain-free, can be made dairy-free, it's also refined sugar-free and absolutely delicious. So let's get started. I've got two cups of almond flour here and this is going to be the base of our bread and I've got a quarter cup of cassava flour and I've got one teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of sea salt. And we're gonna go ahead and just whisk this together. And once you do that, you're just gonna set it aside and we're gonna start to combine our wet ingredients. And to make our wet ingredients, I've got three eggs that I'm gonna put into my stand mixer. And I have a quarter cup of butter, but you can also use coconut oil if you wanna make this a dairy-free version. So it's completely up to you. And as a sweetener, we're gonna be using a quarter cup of honey. And you can also use maple syrup for this as well. And we've got a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice, and I always recommend using fresh. And we also have one teaspoon of lemon extract, and this is completely optional, but it does give it a really nice citrusy kick. And we've got one, the, the juice, I'm sorry, the zest of one lemon from the same lemons that we got our juice from. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in as well. And that's all the ingredients that are gonna make the base of the bread. So we're gonna go ahead and get this mixing. And you don't need to over mix it, you just want it to be just well combined that we're going to add in our dry ingredients. Okay, and so now we're going to go ahead and add in the dry ingredients and you want to do this slowly. Um, so we're just going to do a little bit at a time and then we'll start to mix some of it in and then we'll continue the process until it's all completely combined. And you can actually mix some in while it's combining. Just be careful, it can be a little messy with the cassava flour. And it's pretty well combined. I'll go ahead and show you the consistency here. It should be kind of wet, but also very well combined. And we're gonna go ahead and remove that from our stand mixer. And now our blueberries are gonna go in. So you wanna use fresh blueberries. Definitely try to not use frozen ones. It's not gonna turn out as great. And you just wanna throw those in there and then fold them into the batter. So don't put these in your mixer because we want them to stay as whole as possible. And really it's just a few you know, a few mixes and just enough to get them combined. Your dough should look like this. And now we're ready to put it into our loaf pan. So I have a nine by five loaf pan that's been greased. And again, I use grass fed butter on this, but you can also use coconut oil for it. And we're just gonna go ahead and pour in our cake mixture. And just make sure you use that rubber spatula again. You can really coat, get the sides clean, make sure you get it all in here. And once it's all in, we'll go ahead and just give it a few shakes on the counter just to get it nice and smooth. And don't worry about it, it's going to rise in your pan, so it should be about halfway full. And we're going to put this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes. And I do recommend putting it in for 20 minutes and checking it. And if you notice it's starting to brown a little bit too much, you can put a piece of foil over it and then continue baking it for the next 20 minutes or so. And our bread is now out of the oven and I've let it cool for just over an hour. And the trick to the success with our icing is to make sure the bread is completely cooled before you start. And to start our icing, I have half a cup of coconut butter here and I've gone ahead and melt it a little bit and you can either use a blender you can use a food processor or you can do it by hand with a whisk but we're gonna add in two tablespoons of maple syrup and I have two tablespoons of melted coconut oil and I have about a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice and we're just gonna go ahead and stir this together and see what our consistency looks like and again you know you could do this in your blender it makes it a little bit easier to do but by hand is not too bad either and i've got some water so if you don't like the texture that you're getting or you want it to be a little bit runnier we can always add some water in but otherwise you know it should be a pretty good consistency that's going to represent icing and going to really stick to our cake so as you can see it's really coming together and we might just add just a touch of water just to make sure that it runs on our cake. So it's looking pretty good. And I do water one tablespoon at a time. So we're just gonna start with one tablespoon and we're gonna see what kind of texture that gets us and see if that's enough. And usually I find that about two tablespoons is the magic number, but it really depends on how melted your coconut oil is and your maple syrup and things like that. So. Let's see what we look like at two tablespoons here. 
And once you've added in your water, you really want it to have a nice and creamy consistency, and it really needs to be kind of like an icing, so you can decide how runny you want it, but the thicker it is, the more it's gonna stay firm on the bread. If you want it a little runnier, it's gonna drip down the sides. And to apply the icing to our cake, I like to use a decorating spoon, and that helps just to kind of drizzle it on there. And so you'll just start at one end and kind of drizzle. And it's okay for it to kind of go on the edges. I actually really like it when it drips down the sides. Gets a little extra flavor on the sides of it. So go ahead and just pour that on. And we probably could have made this a little bit runnier, but as it starts to cool and warm up with the bread as well, it's gonna to start to melt just a little bit. And now that our bread is completely iced, we're able to dive in and see how it tastes. So let's go ahead and use our knife and slice into it here. And it should slice open perfectly. Falling off the plate a little bit here, but we're gonna give it a little taste and see how it tastes. Mmm, so good. This is one of my favorite recipes in the cookbook. It's so clean, it's delicious, you can use it for breakfast, you can have it as a dessert. You can get the recipe in my cookbook, Wandering Palette, and it's available on my website, thetrilltohealth.com, or on Amazon as well. I hope you enjoy the recipe.